Good morning. So who am I? Before I begin that, let me just say this. Um, I'm more of a conversationalist than a lecturer. So just imagine that we're not in an auditorium, but we, we like Panera Bread or Big Coffee. <laughs> and I apologize for being selfish, but it makes me comfortable just to think in that context. I want to talk to you about my journey. And it was 19 years of reconnecting and reflection. Reconnecting and reflecting because one of the things that we do as adults, we value our transition from childhood to adulthood. We even give it a word. We call it maturity. But I think that there are some lessons from children and babies that we should retain. That we should retain in order to prevent us from doing the number one thing that kids never do and adults do is quit. So I want to talk to you about my journey about quitting. And what I learned about quitting is I had some feelings about that. I had some behaviors that I associated with that. And I had to identify those things in order for me not to quit again. And I also had to develop a system that will help me stop quitting. Then I gave myself a second chance. I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. But before I talk about that, let's talk about how we see kids, right? Typically, we see children and babies as lovable and adorable. We associate words like innocent with them, unless they're getting into the cookies or something. <laughs> but what about if we identify them as fearless adventurers? What if we thought about them as architects of resilience and creativity? Next week, I'll be an uncle 19 times, my wife reminded me. And if I see this image all the time. And I think that as adults, we very rarely see children as thinkers. But what is that child looking at? What does that child, that baby, what does it look at as it stare at you just doing normal everyday things like talking and walking or going to the refrigerator or whatever? And I think about that. What, what, is, what does my niece see? I know what I see in babies. When I think about babies, I think about, man, they have no reference to look back on to walk. They don't see adults crawling and getting to their knees and then start walking. But it becomes natural for a baby. And just think about that process. A baby crawls. A baby will push itself to his knees and from his knees to his feet to take a couple of steps. And sometimes they fall down. And then they get back up. To me, that's remarkable. Not to have a record. But as adults, how are we different? See, we put an imaginary placeholder on the things that we fail at. Never to, go, very rarely to go back and do it again. And I'm reminded of a personal story. A few years ago, I learned how to ski. And I was equipped with my YouTube videos to help me. <laughs> and so, as we were going up this lift, my wife, she tells me, she says, when, if you go too fast down the mountain, just snow plow and you will slow down. So I get up on the mountain and I'm going down and she rubbed past me because she's pretty experienced. Here I go, I'm going too fast. So I try to snow plow. I'm snow plowing, I'm snow plowing, I'm not slowing down. <laughs> so what I do is I kick those skis off. And I walked to the bottom of the mountain. And see, I wasn't embarrassed that I had to walk, that I was at the bottom of the mountain and I had walked. What I was embarrassed about is because in the chairlift in front of me, two kids were talking about their experience. And I saw these kids as I went back up, jump off the chairlift and down Black Diamond Mountains. 
falling and getting back up the whole time. So I was a little bit embarrassed by that. But years before born, I can't even tell you a specific date or time, I quit on myself. And I quit on myself and it ended me in prison. And most people, they will say, well, what was prison like? And we have to lock up criminals. And I'm going to say, for me, prison wasn't about crime. It was about quitting. Because at the heart of a criminal is a quitter. And so I first had to identify, what, what was quitting like for me? What did I feel like when I wanted to quit? So I identified some feelings. I felt hopeless, I was afraid, and I felt helpless. And what did I do when I did those things? So my behavior, I withdrew. And I think about in that cell where there was no chairlift to take me back to society, I had to recreate myself. And I recreated myself just like my friend Diego said, through reading. And I contrasted myself with the people that I read, and it's too many to name. But I thought about why were they successful and I wasn't. Did they possess a unique element within them that I didn't have? And I would find out that they did. The difference was they didn't quit. They continued on even in failure just like that child. And so I inventory these feelings. And when they were resurfaced, I had to create an alarm system, something that would say, stop when you're ready to quit. An internal signal within myself that would say, you, you got to stop because you're about to quit. And there was three things that I had to do. One, I had to be comfortable about talking about my feelings because that feeling resulted in a behavior, resulted in an action. Two, I had to give myself a different measurement. And so I thought about a glass and you put some water in it. And I thought about the glass is not half empty, but it's half full. So maybe now I see things a little bit different. Prison would not be a challenge for these things that I recreated with, within myself. It's too structured. Everything is on a timetable. So my challenge would come as I was up for parole. So I was ready to be released, and I had to talk to some folks about being released. And one of the questions that they asked me after I had spent more years in prison that I had spent out in society, they asked me, not in these specific words, but they asked me, why do you deserve to be free? And see, that old me, I would have withdrew. I would have ran internally, not externally, you know. I would have ran from that question. But I was able to provide that person with the feelings and the behaviors and the actions connected with why I was there. So I felt pretty prepared. And on December 15, 2009, I was released. And I thought of myself as that child again, that fearless adventurer that's ready for the world. And I would return back to my town, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And in 20 years, it had changed just like the rest of the world. And not only did it change, but society has an expectation of man that I didn't know how to, how to adapt to. One thing that I did know is from my reflecting back on the child is I couldn't cry or I couldn't crawl. I had to walk because that was the expectation. I often think to myself, 
is this really working? And I think it is. It's, you know, not that I'm here today to talk about it. That's not the measure of success. The measure of success is it's been almost four years since I've been released. I'm married, my wife in the crowd somewhere. We're expecting a child. I work for the greatest company on planet Earth in Cascade Engineering. I went from a supervisor to now I am in the Cascade Enterprise System, which is a continuous improvement business unit. I also, this fall, will be obtaining my associate's degree in business administration. And the system, I still have to make some adjustments. But when people ask me, we have that cliche, you never say never. I can say never. I can say never to, I'm never going back to prison. I can say it confidently. I'm never going back to prison. And I think about my nephew sometimes. I keep him. He always play video games and stuff. And so when he loses, he restart the game. What, what are you doing? And he tell me, Uncle Jay, if you lose, you just restart it. So I take that concept and I apply it to myself. If I'm losing, I'm going to restart and so now I talk to men about their transition and restart. I talk to them about reconnecting with that child in you and gaining that fearless adventurer, that resilient person that you are destined to be and not quit. Give yourself a second chance. And while you might not be involved in crime or things like that that make you quit and, and have such dire consequences, we quit in everyday things, smoking, diets, exercise. Examine why you quit and put yourself back in the game. And remember it by reflecting on that child that you transitioned out of. Thank you.